Um, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. This is your show, America. Thank you for joining us. Open phones this hour at 888-825-5225. 888 Scranton, Pennsylvania, Sarah is on the line. Hi, Sarah. How are you? Hi there, sir. Thank you for taking my call. You're my number one podcast. Oh, I'm honored. Thank you. How can I help? Chris Brown's number two. Ah, <laughs> I'll tell him that. Hogan needs to be number three. You need to get him on. There you go. There we go. Um, sir, I have a, a, a state um, question here. Um, uh, I know that we're supposed to form a trust upon my husband and my death. It would be about $3 million of some properties and a business and so forth when we would pass away. What I'm struggling with is I don't know who to assign the responsibility to take care of the trust. Is I don't really know. Nobody in my family is good with money. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, well, it, wouldn't, um, it wouldn't be them then. Would it be a lawyer? <laughs> yeah, it can be. Is the uh, And you have minor children that you're concerned yes. that the trust is managed for their good, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, you can have a lawyer do it. Uh, there are trust departments at banks that you can have do it. Um, here's the thing you need to be aware of when you have an outside trustee like that. Uh, you need to have lots of detail in the trust as to how the money will be invested. Because, okay. for instance, a I don't use bank trust departments very often because what they have is when someone is a trustee of a trust, they are, they are supposed to be acting as a fiduciary. That means they act in the best interest of the beneficiaries, of your kids. And what happens in the corporate trust world, like bank trust departments and some lawyers acting as a trust is, they're so afraid they're going to get accused of having taken a risk on behalf of the child that they take no risks. And what they end up doing is destroying the portfolio now, what, what I mean is this. Instead of, for instance, when our kids were minors, I had that the money will be invested in growth stock mutual funds, 25% in four categories, growth, growth and income, aggressive growth, and international. And all the mutual funds had to have at least a 10-year track record, okay? Mm-hmm. And so I very carefully spelled it out because otherwise, if you don't, you just say you need to invest this money for the child's benefit. Then what happens is the trustee, a corporate trustee like this, will just drop the money in a bank CD and make 1% on it. Okay. Which would be stupid. Okay. Right. And they don't manage it well. Now, in the uh, what is the money invested in now? Well, it would be a million with both of us if we passed away our life insurance policy. Okay. Actually, actually, seven fifty for him, five hundred for me. Got gotcha, you, million two. And, okay. Yeah, and then um, a two hundred and fifty thousand property we live in now. Uh huh. A five hundred thousand property we own, and mm-hmm. a, tra- a track of land that's about a hundred and fifty. Okay. Then so what I would do is you decide what you want to happen to those if you die. Do you want them sold and the money invested in mutual funds? Do you want them managed? Do you want to just sit there until the child graduates? Whatever. In the event of your death, and you specifically spell that out, what you want it invested in and how and under what circumstances. Okay. Now, do we put it in both of our wills? You can you can have what's called a mirror image will where everything's the same in both wills, just the names are changed. Okay. And uh, and then so the trust is going to function the same way either way. Okay. But it only it only activates upon both of your death. Right. Right. Okay. And so as long as one of you is alive, what what Sharon's of mine used to say was, and when it was simpler in the old days, was if I die, she gets everything. If she dies, I get everything. If we both die, that's when the other stuff kicks in. Yep. And so you know, so what I'm saying is above that line, below the line when we both die, it's the, those it, wills are exactly the same. That's called a mirror image will, and, and that makes it less expensive because it's just word processor work for the attorney to knock it out. Then, okay. Now, do you have any resources that would kind of guide me? Like, do I need to list income that comes off to take care of the children, or? Uh, usually, a, if you've got an estate this size, you're going to be sitting with an estate planning attorney, and they're going to give you some checklists of what that you want to do. What I'm recommending is that you're going to be more specific than maybe a lot of people would be because you don't have someone outside that's managing it that way. 
I mean, okay. you, you've got a, like a bank trustee or you've got an attorney that's going to be a trustee or something. Where okay. if your brother would follow your instructions, you could leave him a letter of instructions and leave the trust more vague. But your brother's not capable, so we're not going to let him do it. Right. That's what I'm okay. saying. So you're going to have to be very, very you know, clear of exactly what happens. Some of the other things people talk about for trust for minor kids upon your death is, uh, uh, you know, that the money can't be used for anything, of course, except for them. A certain amount could come out per month that's the equivalent of, like, child support or a little more. In other words, whoever's taking care of the kids gets the money to take care of them with. Uh, you can cash out the money uh, big chunks only for a couple of things, and you decide what those are. Uh, we allowed a certain, you know, like $10,000 for a car when they turn 16, college College education uh, could be paid for out of the trust. Uh, we also would allow, um, if they had a major medical event, that the money could be used for that, for their good. And so we left some wiggle room in there just so that the kids were cared for as if we would have cared for them were we there. And then once they turned, uh, when they graduated from college, they would get a certain amount paid out, a percentage, and, and then at 25, another amount, and then at 30, another amount. And you can you can set, you know, ages up that they get certain amounts at certain ages. Or you can just let them have it all whenever they turn 18, however you want to do it. But, no way. you know, the age, the age staging is a fairly standard thing that people see and medical cars and college are a fairly standard thing that people see and care and feeding of the kids monthly income is a fairly standard thing that you'll see in these that that's some of the fairly boilerplate things but then what the money is invested in and the control from the grave <laughs> that you're going to place on that with the trust i'm recommending you get pretty specific there okay uh, that Thank that you. keeps the trustee from, in the name of a fiduciary responsibility, from getting too conservative and ruining the portfolio. Okay, thank you. Hey, thanks for the call. We appreciate you joining us. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Sarah, hold on. I'm going to have Kelly pick up and give you a copy of the book, The Legacy Journey, uh, which has some um, some discussions about your legacy and it talks a little bit about estate planning and wills and so forth. So uh, that's my latest book, the only Christian book I've done, because it's a book on wealth and what the Bible says about wealth versus money. So, all right, Tim is with us in Tucson. Hi, Tim. How are you? Hey, Dave. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Hey, I, I'm curious about I've been a fan of yours for a number of years. I'm kind of curious about your thoughts about cash back credit cards. Well, you know, uh, if you're a fan of mine, you know we don't use credit cards. <laughs> I understand that. Uh, and I have followed your program. You know, about, uh, I became debt-free about six years ago. Uh, and Hey, the commercial, the commercial snuck up on me, man. I'll tell you what. Hold on. We're going to talk about this after the break. I should have made you wait until after the commercial because I goofed. But hold on. I'll be right back with you. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. Got your racing live. Heard only on KCA8 is your command center for racing news, the hottest interviews, and DIY projects. We are your destination for interviews with racers and fans, on-track interviews, in-shop interviews with engine builders, car restorers. Hear from our correspondents on live track car shows. Got your racing live. Start your engine and race on over to KCAA 1050 AM, 106.5 FM every Saturday at our new time, 11 AM. Got your racing live where we put you in the driver's seat. I literally started my business on a card table in my living room. In those days, I was the one responsible for keeping track of my expenses. And if I wanted my family to eat, I had to make sure the money was coming in. I was a true entrepreneur. Nowadays, I know there's a better way. It's called FreshBooks. And I'm a big fan of what they do. FreshBooks is an online software and mobile app that allows you to track your time, capture expenses, and create professional invoices. It's easy and it works. Find out what over 5 million entrepreneurs and small business owners just like you have already discovered. 
You can try free today at GetFreshBooks.com. Just enter the Dave Ramsey Show under How Did You Hear About Us for your free 30-day trial. That's GetFreshBooks.com. And remember, enter the Dave Ramsey Show to get started today. KCAA 1050 AM and 106.5 FM is San Bernardino Strong. In Agnet West today, a national leader will head to California for the World Ag Expo in a few weeks. The story after this. Your nut and stone fruit trees have worked hard for you all season long. And now they're ready to sit back, relax, and enjoy a little downtime. Don't let peach twig borer ruin that rest. Asana XL Insecticide, now available from Vaynet USA Corporation, protects your trees from peach twig borer during dormancy and delay dormancy, preparing them for the next season. Asana is formulated with a unique cottonseed oil that's rain fast and has excellent UV stability, even under intense sunlight. That means Asana lasts longer for outstanding extended control, rain or shine. Give your trees the break they deserve from peach twig borer with a dormant or delayed dormant application of Asana. To learn more, talk to your PCA or go to valent.com slash Asana. And while you're there, find out how retained plant growth regulator helps with fruit and nut set during cherry and walnut bloom. Asana XL is a restricted use pesticide. Always read and follow label instructions. The World Ag Expo will feature a seminar session with one of the nation's top agriculture leaders. U.S. Deputy Secretary of Agriculture Krista Hardin is a featured panelist during the Women's Seminar Series. Hardin will join California Secretary of Agriculture Karen Ross and Tulare County Agriculture Commissioner Marilyn Kenosheta on the Future of Agriculture panel. Krista Hardin was sworn in as Deputy Secretary for the U.S. Department of Agriculture on August 12, 2013, after unanimous confirmation by the U.S. Senate. Deputy Secretary Hardin helps lead the department, working to strengthen the American agricultural economy and revitalize our nation's rural communities. The Future of Agriculture panel session is scheduled for Wednesday, February 10th at 2 p.m. Admission to the seminar is free with paid admission to the expo. This is the first year for the Women's Seminar Series, which is sponsored by Women in Ag for Mentoring and Empowerment. I'm Sabrina Hill for agnetwest.com. A journey of a thousand words begins here. KCAA. of the Dave Ramsey Show. We're talking to Tim in Tucson, Arizona. We started having a conversation. The commercial rudely interrupted us. Uh, Tim had a question, something about cashback credit cards. Sorry about that, Tim. Sure. So your question's what? That's fine. Not a problem. Hey, hey I'm kind of curious. I'm trying to think of what I'm overlooking here. Uh, I've been an avid friend of fan of yours for a long time. I surrendered all my debt about six years ago when I retired from my job. Uh, however, uh, I do have a credit card. I've got to confess. <laughs> and so it's for the cash back purposes, and I do pay the balance off every month in full. So I don't, uh, I don't just pay the minimum. So and they give me a cash back, you know, annually. So I'm trying to think of what I'm doing wrong here. If I'm in fact doing anything wrong, because I know you're a great advocate of not having any credit cards. All right. Well, obviously, this behavior is not going to bankrupt you. You're a disciplined person. You're paying your card off every month, and, um, you know, you've gotten yourself out of debt. You're under control and that kind of a thing. The the thing that's just kind of amusing, though, is a guy as smart as you, uh, you know, you're doing an awful lot of work for 1% of something, you know? Right. And, um, I mean, to the point that you even called the show to talk about it. That, that's a lot of work to get through on the show, you know. And, uh, well, actually, the first time I called it, I was really uh, surprised. Oh, I am too. I'm glad you got through. Okay. But, I mean, you know, if you spend $100,000 on that card, right. it's 1000 bucks. Right. Whoopee. This is yeah, not a life-changing yeah. event. It's not, right. it's, it's not worth the postage stamp for the discussion. I mean, and and what happens is, is that when people, you know, have a cashback card, the reason right. they do that is people run more, they run more charges through it sure. and they buy stuff more. And so, okay. I mean, all the studies have proven even debit cards versus hard cash, you spend more because cash activates the pain centers of the brain and plastic mm -hmm. doesn't. And what the studies have shown us is the easier, in the Internet world, we call it friction. 
Have you ever gone to a website and they make it too hard to buy something and you punt? Exactly. That's friction in, on a website, okay? Right. And so the less friction you've got, the, eat, the more you buy. And that's true on a website. It's true with your payment methodology as well. And and so when you swipe a card and you have this sense that I'm getting rewards back and I didn't feel any friction, your spending on average goes up. All the studies have proven that. Now, you're a pretty disciplined guy, so it's not going up so much that it matters either. So this discussion is more theoretical and hypothetical than anything. OK, but the, the, because on your side of the coin, the amount of money you're getting back is a joke on my side of the coin. The amount of extra money you're spending by using this low friction rewards based payment method, uh, the amount of extra money you're spending is not it's not enough to move the needle either. It's a joke. So you're OK either way. We're, we're in the realm of your survival here. But to discuss it theoretically as to why Dave Ramsey takes a stand and says, hey, don't fool with cashback cards and don't fall sure. into that trap, that's the reason you spend more. It's a low-friction reward-based payment methodology, and all the studies show that's why they do it. They've got these studies that show that you spend more. You spend a little less with a debit card because you have this sense that it's tied to your checking account and you could have an overdraft moment, and it feels a little bit more like cash. And you spend uh, the average purchase, an average purchase of under $100, uh, you'll spend 12 to 18% more in a shopping day uh, with a debit card or a credit card than you will with actual cash, as a matter of fact. That's what the studies show us. Vending machines, 178% more when they, when they take credit, when they take a plas piece of plastic versus, because you're like, hey, give me the Coke and the potato chips. You just double the sale, right? And, and right. that's what happens. Because you don't think about it. You don't feel, you don't have any emotional connectivity to the actual expenditure. That's why when we put right. people on the envelope system, Tim, you've heard us talk about that. It changes right. their grocery buying. Because they're paying cash for their groceries out of an envelope, and, uh, and and grocery stores are the best merchandisers of all retail. They sell you stuff on impulse more than anybody else in all of retail. And so to be able to control yourself in that environment. So all of these, these this research and this methodology of behavior management that we've studied all these years and, and gathered up all this research of other people is what have led me to the conclusion. But on a very practical, tactical, in Tim's life... Tim's debt free. He's paying off his card every month. You know, you're not going to spend so much more that it's going to affect your life because of this card. And you're and and, and these points aren't. You're not going to make enough on them that it's going to affect your life. It's a joke. The whole discussion mathematically, it, it's a thousand bucks here or there, five hundred bucks here or there in your world. Now, other folk that are listening, oh my God, what a mess! I mean, these debt. You know, in, in the name of chasing points. They'll do this stuff. I'll give you an example. My grandmother, who was tight as a bark on a tree, God rest her soul, she was so tight, but she would spend extra money at the grocery store. Any of y'all old enough to remember green stamps? Well, all that was was cash back. All that was was reward-based payment methodology. And so she would buy extra stuff because she could get the green stamps, and she was saving up for the lawn chair at the green stamp store. And some, but, but people, the tightest people in the world get confused when they think they're getting money back. And, and you know, and then there's the one, uh, promise or whatever it was that came out and give you 1% back towards your kid's college. I'm saving up for my kid's college. You're going to have to spend $28 million on this card to send your kid to college at 1%. Think about the numbers. It's absurd. And so all of that falls into this discussion, Tim. So it's good to talk about, and I appreciate you calling and talking it through. And you can do whatever you want to do. I'm not going to be mad at you. We're going to be friends either way. I'm just not going to play their game. I'm not playing their game anymore. Whatever it is, whatever behavior they're trying to get me to engage in, I'm going to try to engage in the exact opposite behavior because I know the behavior they want me to engage in, they being the bank, they being the credit card company, is always good for them. And it's not good for me. And so I'm always going to go the other way. But, I mean, I've got some millionaire friends that use cashback cards, but most all the millionaires I meet with use debit cards uh, and, and or at, if they do use a credit card, they certainly don't chase rewards with it. Because I've never met a millionaire said, Dave, you know, those airline miles, that was my financial breakthrough. I never met one. 
<laughs> Barbara's with us. Barbara's in Springfield, Missouri. Hi, hey, Barbara. How are you? Good. How are you, Dave? Thanks for taking my call. Absolutely. How can I help? Okay. Uh, just a quick question. I'm going to be retiring, or I plan on it. I'll be 65 in May, and I have like 158,000 in 401ks, and I wanted to know um, how do I distribute that? Where do I need to put it? And, you know, annuities, IRAs, uh, mutual funds. Give me your opinion. Anytime someone leaves a company, whether they're heading into retirement or not, we recommend that they roll their 401k into IRAs, into, IRAs. into growth stock mutual funds. Okay, and right. that, that would be spreading your money across four types of growth stock mutual funds that have long track records, growth, growth and in income, aggressive growth, and international and we always recommend that you get into, if you don't have a mutual fund broker to help you do all of that, get in touch with one of our endorsed local providers, our ELPs, we call them, for investing. And when you sit down with them, they need to have, they're supposed to have, we train them to have, we teach them to have. They don't work for me, but in order to get my endorsement, they're supposed to have the heart of a teacher. And so when you meet with them, you're going to understand what you're putting money in. That's the idea. And so you want to understand what you're putting money in. And, again, my recommendation is, and what I personally do is, four types of growth stock mutual funds. Growth, growth and income, aggressive growth, and international. Thanks for joining us, Barbara. We appreciate you being here. Open phones this hour as we talk about your life and your money. This is The Dave Ramsey Show. Being a KCAA Loma Linda at 106.5 FM K293 CF Marino Valley. Here's the latest. I'm Doug Parrish. The volatility on Wall Street is more than evident today. The Dow Jones Industrial Average was down more than 400 points, once again due to falling oil prices and China's bear market. But will Wall Street's woes have an effect on the U.S. economy? There are a lot of other data points to indicate uh, the strength and durability of the U.S. economy. That was White House spokesman Josh Earnest today, citing December's stronger-than-expected U.S. jobs report. Well, the White House is being asked to help out in Flint, Michigan. Governor Rick Snyder is asking for a federal disaster declaration there. It comes after elevated levels of lead were found in Flint's water supply. The situation has resulted in a lawsuit and an investigation by the state attorney general's office. Actor Dan Haggerty has died. Haggerty starred in the film and later in TV in The Life and Times of Grizzly Adams. Haggerty lost his battle to cancer. He was 74. You're listening to the latest from 24-7 News. One piece of news that's dragging down Wall Street today is Walmart's announcement that 300 of its stores will be closing. 154 of them will be closing here in the U.S. That'll affect about 10,000 employees in this country. Two men and a teenager are pleading not guilty in the shooting death of a Los Angeles area cop. The trio was arraigned today, accused of killing off-duty police officer Ricardo Galvez back in November as he sat in his car. The two adults could face the death penalty if convicted. The 17-year-old boy could face life in prison. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo isn't taking kindly to Ted Cruz's remarks about New York values. Cuomo says if Cruz had any class, he would apologize. In last night's GOP debate, Cruz summarized New York values as being socially liberal, pro-abortion, pro-gay marriage, and focused on money and the media. I'm Doug Parrish. 
Hi, it's Dave Collins in Snow Country. We are setting up for perfect conditions almost at any mountain you choose from from this long three-day holiday weekend. Mountain high right now with almost 50 trails. Also, snow sun with two dozen runs. They're skiing at 100% of their terrain open, and they stay open until nighttime under the lights at Snow Summit. June with three to six inches over the past week. They've got three dozen trails on a packed powder surface. Also, China Peak with eight inches of fresh snowfall over the past week. They are at 100%. That's 1,400 acres for you to explore at China Peak. Sugar Bowl with about a foot and a half of snowfall over the past week as well, so you'll find some stashes of fresh powder left over on their almost 100 trails. 96% of the terrain is open for you at Sugar Bowl. Headed over to Arizona Sunrise Park with over a foot in the past week. They're skiing at 100%. Also at 100% is the Arizona Snow Bowl. Sun Valley in Idaho with 93% of their terrain open. That's 113 trails on packed powder and fresh powder. More at snowcountry.com. I'm Dave Collins on KCAA 1050 AM and the all-new 106.5 FM, the stations that leave no listener behind like to spend a few days in another world then write this down golden bear cottages big bear lake now listen this is not some corporate owned operation it's family owned and operated by some real nice people unique oh you bet golden bear cottages features 28 one-of-a-kind cabins on a five acre historic site great for families couples and groups and cabins are available with one to seven bedrooms golden bear cottages is just a stone throw from Big Bear Lake and super close to three great ski areas. Now, I could go on all day about Golden Bear Cottages in Big Bear, but to see everything, just go to goldenbear.net. Again, goldenbear.net. Golden Bear Cottages in Big Bear. Clean, comfortable, and affordable. Check them out. Goldenbear.net. In the mood for some great Chinese food? Well, Mr. Yu's Chinese food is where you need to be. Mr. Yu's Chinese food not only has a delicious dinner menu, they also offer delicious lunch specials, including their yummy fried rice and chow mein. But get this, it also includes any two items just for $5.85. Or you can get any one item for only $4.85. You should also try their big bowl special for just $4.10. The service is fast and friendly. Mr. Yu's Chinese food is located at 256 Carousel Mall in San Bernardino, California. To contact Mr. Yu's Chinese food, call 909-383-0195. Again, that's 909-383-0195. And yes, the Carousel Mall is still open. That's right! Switch Reels Gospel Hour is a show designed to enhance our lives spiritually, mentally, and musically. I'm your host, Elisa. Join us for the fun of learning every Saturday from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. on KCAA 1050 AM and 106.5 FM. From the KCAA Weather Center, I'm Tom Land. For this afternoon, it'll be sunny. Expect a high near 60. Cloudy tonight with low around 47. Partly sunny Saturday and a high near 65. It'll be cloudy Saturday night with low around 46. The outlook for Sunday, sunny and a high near 68. Cloudy Sunday night with low around 48. And for Martin Luther King Day Monday, sunny, high near 66. That's your weather forecast for this hour from KCAA 106.5 FM and 1050 AM. The stations that leave no listener behind. of Ramsey Solutions, Alex and Audrey are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? What's up, Dave? Welcome, welcome. Honored to have you. Where do you live? We are from Raleigh, North Carolina. Fun. Well, that's a bit of a drive over from there to Nashville. A little bit. Did you fly or drive? No, we drove. That's a bit of a haul. So you're here to do your debt-free scream. How much have you paid off? Paid off $60,000. And how long did that take you? About four and a half years. Wow, very cool. Making what kind of money? 
Uh, starting out about 30000 and this year we're just a uh, tad over 80000 Whoa, that's a big change. Yep. So what caused that income change? Uh, you know, just, uh, you know, I, I, I'm a, a real estate agent, uh, ELP with you, and so, mm-hmm. uh, you know, getting into to sales and stuff like that, that really helped, and and uh, and so that's kind of how that happened. Ah, okay. So you're getting better and better at the business, huh? That's right. Good for you. Way to go. Congratulations. So what kind of debt was the 60000 bucks? Um, some of it was student loans, credit cards, two cars. Just about everything. We Just had a everything. dog that broke its leg that we financed and <laughs> yeah. all, all, all sorts of stuff. We so did. It's, uh, You it, guys were normal. That's right. Yeah. If you could finance it, we probably did. Yeah, fairly normal folks. So what happened four and a half years ago that changed this? changed your story. Tell me about the journey. Yeah, so uh, around the 2008 election cycle, I got kind of sick of uh, listening to uh, the political talk radio and so kind of got turned on to you and and, and, uh, started listening to you and and uh, agreed with everything you said. And then, you know, 2009, we decided to uh, buy a house when we were flat broke and I thought the rules didn't apply to me. Uh, I thought everything was that Dave Ramsey taught was good, except for, you know, me buying a house. I thought it was ready. And, and, uh, and so that was kind of a little bit of a disaster. And so we ended up having to, uh, to sell that house. And, and, uh, and so that was kind of rock bottom for us. And so, you know, from, from that point, uh, we kind of drew a line in the sand and said, you know, we're, we're done. We're not borrowing any more money. And so, mm-hmm. uh, you know, from there, it was, it was just kind of. Uh, so you went from listening to doing. That's right. Yep. Okay. So, uh, Audrey, what, what, tell me that conversation. He comes home and says, <laughs> okay, I've been listening to this guy, but now we're actually going to do it? Or you came up with the idea, or what happened? It was mostly him. Mm-hmm. He's the idea guy. Um, the good ones I, and the bad ones. I remember yeah. cutting up my credit cards. <laughs> okay. And that was, a, that was hard. Yeah. But I knew that we could not continue just living off of debt yeah. and not having any money. So. Cool. so which one of these debts that when you paid it off you went? Oh, I'm so glad that's gone. I I'd say people. the student loan. We paid that off about three months ago. Sally May gets yeah. her eviction yeah. papers. Yeah. You no longer live with us, old lady. Into the street. Yeah. I love it. Very cool. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, it, it, it's it's kind of interesting because our, our story is not a perfect one. Uh, and that's kind of, you know, I was thinking of, uh, you know, uh, leading into to this event for us, you know, I kind of wanted to think about the message I wanted to convey to the other listeners out there. And our story was was very far from perfect. And it's, you know, we you know we took you know three steps back and then four or five steps forward. It's just that constant constant back and forth of of heading in the right direction. And you have some setbacks, and you've got to take a step back and regroup. What was the worst setback emotionally that you didn't know if you were going to get back on track after that one? You know, I, I think, you know, for a long time it was it was really tough because, um, you know, I, I didn't go to college. And so I, quit, I equate a lot of my career history to to gaining an education. And so one of the toughest things is there were there were some years where our health care expenses were a, a large part, 25 percent of our, our annual income. And, and so that that was really hard to swallow when those years we just we made literally no no traction. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we just had to survive through that year. And we were. We were very good from the beginning to say we're done. We're not borrowing money. It's not an option, and and we were and we still struggle a little bit with with living on a budget. We're good at living on on what we make, but this process could have been a little bit quicker if we had mastered the budget. And mm-hmm. so, uh, you know, that was the toughest thing for us is, is is learning to budget. I mean, we you know we didn't borrow a dime through this whole whole process, but. You know, but telling our money to, where to go, we struggled with that a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So you're proof that if you work it hard enough, you can do it anyway. Yeah. 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 yeah and it, cool. it was, you know, and you kind of have to shift your mind to where, and we were talking about this this morning, you have to shift your mind to where debt is no longer an option. Mm-hmm. And, and once you get to that point, you know, it, it may take you two years, it may take you five years, but once you get to that point, then it's just hard work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's exactly right. But that's what happened to us, and that we just took that as an, off the table. Something comes up, borrowing money wasn't an option, so we just had to figure out another way to do it. And we just changed. Once we did that, that was a huge breakthrough in in, in Dave and Sharon Ramsey's journey on this. So, well, congratulations, you two. Yeah, very yeah. proud of you. One, one more thing, it's kind of like you know, growing up, you know, your parents always had this discussion to tell you, you know, when you see drugs, you say no to it, and the decision's already made. And so, when you get to that point in your personal life with with the with debt. 
and with financing things, then the decision's already made. You don't have to think about it when you're walking into the store or your mm-hmm. your friends get a new car and, and you know, you don't even have to think about it because it's not an option. And so right. I think that's that's really important and I think that's kind of the, the key to us, you know, making it through this process and getting out of debt. That's a that's well said. I tell leaders all the time that have trouble making decisions in leadership that if you have a strong value system, your value system already made most of your decisions. Yep. You already know what you're going to do. No, it's just doing it is the pain in the butt. That's yeah. the thing. So, yeah. well, congratulations, you guys. Very, very well done. Very proud of you. Honored to have you as an ELP. And uh, Alex and Audrey, Raleigh, North Carolina, $60,000 paid off. An imperfect process, but a perfect result. Four and a half years from thirty to $80,000 worth of income during that period of time. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, one. We're debt-free! <laughs> love it, love it, love it. Well done, you two. Well done. I love it. Well, the new year can be a perfect time to getting serious about getting control of your money. You can do what they did. You can decide I'm going to be debt-free and I need a plan. Well, Financial Peace University has helped over 4 million people use a powerful plan to not only get out of debt and not only spend and save, but to begin to invest and have a plan of being a millionaire. In fact, the average family pays off $5,300 in debt and saves $2,700 in the first 90 days. And you can start this year off right. You can get in Financial Peace University and put a plan together for your money. Classes are starting all over the country right now. There's 10 or 12,000 of them operating at this moment. You can find a Financial Peace University class in your area by going to DaveRamsey.com. That's DaveRamsey.com or call us at 888-22-PEACE. 888-227-3223. Our question of the day comes from Blinds.com. The experience of finding and installing new window treatments is as relaxing as a beautiful view. Visit Blinds.com and use the code RAMSEY and you get one free for every three blinds that you purchase. That's DaveRamsey.com. No, it's not. It's Blinds.com. <laughs> You can't buy any blinds at DaveRamsey.com. Won't happen. <laughs> Shawnee is in Wisconsin with our question. I've been watching your videos in my personal finance class in high school, probably. And I keep hearing that you do not need to go into debt to go to college. And I want to know how. I'm a senior in high school with little to no money saved up, and my parents are not going to help me. How can I do this? Well, Shawnee, you're getting started really late. But it's very possible still. You're a senior in high school. The number one thing that causes people to go into debt when they go to school is they select a school that they cannot afford. So you're broke. You're going to select the cheapest possible school. You probably even need to look at going to a community college for your first two years and make sure that the community college transfers to the four-year in-state school that you want to go to. That's thing number one, college selection. Thing number two, oh, you're going to have to work a lot, and you're going to have to save. You're working 40, 50 hours a week this summer before you go off to school. Yeah, you're going to be working all the time, and you can do that without any trouble. I did it. Lots of people did it, and you're going to apply for a lot of scholarships, and that's just three things you can do, but that'll get you started. Hi, this is Stacy Keach, host of the Twilight Zone radio dramas. Each week, I'll present one of Rod Serling's classic Twilight Zone stories, fully dramatized for radio. Each show will star one of your favorite entertainment personalities, supported by an outstanding ensemble cast, Twilight Zone music, and special sound effects. So be sure to cross over into that fifth dimension on the Twilight Zone radio dramas. Friday nights at midnight, here on KCAA, 1050 AM and 106.5 FM.
It was really important for me to pay off my student loan debt as quickly as possible so that I can get rid of that drain that it would have on my finances. The first thing you have to find is a job, and hopefully it's a job that's in your career field and the thing that you've studied for. When you have that loan and that debt that you're constantly having to pay on, it can be a source of despair and it seems like it's just never going to go away. I saw it as my responsibility to take care of it. I knew that it wasn't anybody else's job to clean up the mess that I made. It was my choices that led me to have this debt in the first place and then it was my responsibility to take care of it. The choices that led me to be able to pay off the student loan were during Financial Peace University, I was creating my budget and I realized I make more than I need just to live on and if I really get serious, I can pay $1,000 every month toward my student loan. And that was what I decided to do. Doing my debt-free scream felt incredible. I'm debt-free! This was something that I really felt that I worked for and that I earned and that was something that was a marker for what my life could be from that moment forward. KCAA 1050 AM and 106.5 FM is San Bernardino Strong. And now it's time for another Support San Bernardino Spotlight. Hi, my name is George Hahn. I am the Senior Minister at the Center for Spiritual Living Inland Empire. In the next few weeks, we would like to support San Bernardino by highlighting the outstanding things about our city. Today's program features Dennis Baxter from Habitat for Humanity. Thank you, George. I'm very proud that Habitat for Humanity San Bernardino area has been serving the residents of the area since 1992, so that's 24 years of building homes and building hope. Each partner family participates in our own uh, curriculum in the greater San Bernardino area that provides guidance and resources to a successful long-term experience as being a homeowner. We have financial literacy classes that they go through so they understand the difference between being a homeowner and being a renter. Our Brush with Kindness program helps out uh, low-income folks with, you know, simple chores around the house. And, of course, our ReStore, uh, located in Redlands, is a real part of our fundraising effort. So it's building homes, it's building hope. Folks can give us a call at 909-478-1176 or habitatsb.org. This program was underwritten by Center for Spiritual Living Inland Empire. If you would like information about today's program, please contact me, Reverend George, by calling 909-883-7171. That's 909-883-7171. Broadcasting more local radio programs than any other station in California, we are KCAA. Slowly closes in And I feel so lonely um, But I, I don't know if that's the right way to, to look at this or what your How, how much is. do you owe in your car? Um, we owe about 16000 Ooh. Okay. And we only have one car payment. Our car payment is $200 a month, so that mm-hmm. one we can, we're, we're doing okay with. Not really. It's a, but, no. Yeah. Okay. It's the credit cards and the medical that is strangling us. No, that's that's what you've chosen to say, what's strangling you. You have $16,000 owed on a car when you make thirty five. dollars yeah, That's a mess. That's true. And um, what do you do for a living? I'm a police officer. Okay, cool. And you're working 40? I am, yes, sir. Okay. Can you can you pick up some other stuff? Um, I, I do pick up what I can, what, what's available. I, I work in a small town, so there's not a whole lot extra, but mm-hmm. I do pick up what I can. Okay. Can you do something else that's non uh police related? That's an option. It's something we've looked at. We we want to keep my wife at home, so we want to make sure it's me that's working. Mm-hmm. Um mm-hmm. so that's kind of where we're our don't, next step is. Don't have a problem at. with that. So um the the bad news is that that you've you know, got some credit card debt. The good news is it's not a lot. 
I mean, a thousand dollars a month would change your life for twelve yeah. months. A thousand dollars a month for twelve months, you'd be debt free, but the car. Yes, sir. Not counting and just living on, you know. So if we could create that much extra income, um, even if it's you know delivering pizzas or even if you're driving a town over to do some officer work after hours, that kind of thing, whatever it is you can pick up. Um, I mean, how far out of Phoenix are you? Uh, about three and a half hours. Ooh, okay. Not even close. All right, that doesn't work. No. All right, so. Well, I, I, you know, that's what I'm looking at here because, you know, you're not calling me up saying I make 135000 and I'm a spoiled yuppie and I don't want to cut my lifestyle. You guys are not living high on the hog. I mean, just, yeah. just to not be in any bigger mess than you're already in with a low income and a, and a child, is it, it's tough. So, um, you know, the income side of the equation is where you can have the most impact the fastest is what I'm saying. Now, I, you know, piling it all together in one loan doesn't fix anything. Um, selling your car is a real possibility if you don't get some income generated. Okay. Because 200 bucks a month for, is, is a big deal. Sure. And, um, you know, get a hoopty that you can pay cash for. Because here's the thing. Think about this. Even making 35 if you had no payments at all, where you'd be? Yeah. No medical, no credit cards, no car. You could save pretty aggressively then towards buying a little better car for cash. And so if you were driving a $2,000 car while you did that, you know, you could clean this mess up a lot faster. And uh, here's a good rule of thumb. You don't want cars to be equal to or more than half your annual income because you have too much invested in it then in things that are going down in value. And you're right on the bubble on that. And this other stuff you've gotten yourself into pushes you over the bubble. So here's what I would prescribe for you, all right? Okay. Number one, do all you can to rethink and pray about and look for extra income. If you can generate another 700 to $1,200 a month in the coming year, you can probably afford to keep this car. Okay. If you're not able to do that, you probably need to sell the car okay. and, and move down in vehicle dramatically and get yourself out of the car payment business. Then you'll have the money to knock these credit cards out because here's the deal. Look at this. Regardless of the interest rate, if you made an extra 1000 bucks a month, $4,000 in credit card debt's gone in four months. Sure. That just like that. And that's what I'm looking at here is, is that you can change this very quickly, very dramatically. Now, you're going to be tired, but you're not afraid of hard work. You're not that guy. No, sir. And especially given that it's a, a short period of time. We're not saying work like this the rest of your life, but I am saying 12 to 18 months, you're going to have to bust it, man. Okay. And, and roll up your sleeves and get it done. Uh, because you're willing to do that and because... Um, and because you are really sick and tired of this debt and you have figured out that it's not working, I'm going to help you. I want you to go through our class, Financial Peace University. And hold on. Kelly is going to pick up. I'm going to pay for it for you. I've got a son that's 24. So uh, know right where you are, man. And if uh, and, and, and I was learning some of these lessons myself the hard way when I was 24. So hold on. Kelly will pick up. We'll get you into a class. If there's not one in your area, for some reason, because you're in a rural area there, um, there probably is. Double check that first. But if there's not, we'll just give you the home study kit. And you and your wife can go through it if there's not a class. But if there's a class in the area, I prefer you go to that. It'll be better for you. Good question, sir. Thank you for joining us. Nathan is with us in Dayton, Ohio. Hi, Nathan. How are you? Good, Dave. How are you? Better than I deserve. How can I help? Okay, so um, <clears throat> I'm starting a new job in two weeks, uh, making more money. Um, but uh, my wife and I, we are in about uh, $57,000 in debt um, from student loans and, and a car that we just bought. Um, so my question is... How much do you owe on the uh, car? Uh, it's 19 um, but we actually purchased an extended warranty that I'm going to cancel, and that'll take about another three off. Yeah. What's your household income? Uh, combined, we make about 95000 Okay. All right, your question's what? Um, so I, I know that you say don't um, contribute to, like, retirement until um, you're out of debt. Good Lord, but, no, you have a mess. Yeah, yeah. So I've got 
so with this new job, I've been contributing, but should I roll that over into my new 401k or should I just take the money, take the penalty and just pay You're, that you off? You mean your old job? Yeah, from my old job instead yeah, no, of I would take, I know, I'd take your old 401k and roll it to an IRA, get with okay. one of our endorsed local providers and do that, and then do not contribute a dime to any savings or investing program until you get this dadgum mess you've made cleaned up. Yeah. And you guys okay. roll up your sleeves and completely focus on this debt. The way you yeah. get out of debt is more about focus than it is about math. Okay. It's about you're saying this is the enemy and we're going to kill him right now. We're going to stomp this thing <laughs> until it's dead. You're going down. You're getting out of debt. You make 95000 bucks. you owe $57,000. Oh, my gosh. It's going to take you 18 yeah. months of living on beans and rice. Maybe two years. Yeah. And you just bought the car. Yeah. Huh. Man, it's a mess. It's a mess. So if I'm in your shoes, that's what I'm doing. No investing. Might sell a stupid car, but certainly drop the extended warranty on it for sure. But, um, yeah, shut everything down, man, and get in attack mode. Get with it. Push it, push it, push it, and get rid of the debt. Because uh, otherwise, you, you know, you're just going to continue to diddy bop along and be normal. And normal's this student loan debt and a car payment and a MasterCard. And normal's, you know, paycheck to paycheck. And normal's I can't really step up and put a lot of money in my 401k because I got so dadgum many payments. And I have to just play with everything and nothing works. When you half butt do everything, none of the needle moves. The needle doesn't move on the debt. It doesn't move on the investing. It doesn't move on anything. And, and so that's why we teach you to focus on one thing at a time using these baby steps. So a hey, good question, man. Thank you for listening. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. station dull and boring like most corporate owned stations on the dial then it's time to tune to kcaa 1050 am it will blow your mind and maybe expand it too kcaa is your independently owned go-to station in the inland empire it's a veritable cornucopia of crazy an assemblage of awesome and cool and it's a little weird too KCAA pumps out more local and national radio each week than most major networks while offering CNBC business news headlines during the week and NBC sports news on weekends. KCAA is unique, interesting, quirky, and sometimes outlandishly crazy, which adds up to a high volume of awesome. And for you audiophiles, KCAA delivers FM sound quality to our transmitter, which is why KCAA is the best sounding AM station on the dial. So make your day with KCAA. And find us online at kcaaradio.com. KCAA, the station that leaves no listener behind. This is KCAA Loma Linda. CNBC News is next. Brought to you by buysellmakeoffer.com. Go there now and join the thousands who have already signed up for a new and exciting way to buy and sell online. Launching January 15th. <laughs> Chris Mauer, CNBC Business Radio. Stocks taking it on the chin today on another plunge in oil prices and a sell-off in Chinese stocks. The Shanghai Composite fell more than 3.5% and has entered bear market territory. The Dow's down 437 points. The Nasdaq lower by 146. Retail sales fell a tenth of a percent in December. The warmer wind-